your goodness forever again and
let our worship rise. As we sing to you, God, as we worship you, let it rise, God, as a fresh incense, Lord, as we sacrifice, God, as we put ourselves on the altar, Lord, as we put our hearts on the altar, God, as we put our minds on the altar, Lord, our souls on the altar, God, Lord, let it burn up, God, let it burn up and rise to you with sweet incense, Lord. We just want to please you, God. We just want to put a smile on your face. He's going to continue to do, amen. We're going we're gonna to proceed, amen. We just had some amazing things happen this, in these last couple of weeks. And we had some folks graduate, amen? That's a big accomplishment, man. You, if you ask, we have a couple high school graduates, and then we got a couple college graduates. The high school kids are probably like, woo, man, we did it. We're done, right? That's, that's all you keep hearing. When you, hear, when you see a high school uh, kid graduate, that's what they all say. It's like, we did it, right? The parents said, man, they did it. I know, right, babe? We were like, man, he did it. Woo, all right. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> But, you know, and then when you think about the college graduates, especially the ones that we have, what an amazing accomplishment that is. Amen. It's a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of Starbucks. Amen. I hear that's what you, you guys all drink is Starbucks. But uh, it, it's amazing. So we just want to honor you guys this morning. We're going to honor them this morning and just kind of just go up and I'm going to have a, my beautiful wife. Look at her. Just walk on up, girl. Work it. Work it. Amen. So we just want to honor them this morning. So as, as they come up, man, just teach them like graduation, right? We're just going to get it, woo, and just start screaming. And then uh, Karina's going to just uh, uh, announce where, what, where they graduated from and what they're doing and all that stuff. So the first one we got coming up is Brenda Candelaria. Brenda graduated from Cal State University. Her <laughs> and moving on to her master's in sociology. Man, with all this, we might have to wait. Let's do that again, babe. Do that again. I don't think they heard what's going on. Oh, you didn't hear it. Well, it says right there. So uh, she graduated from Cal State University, San Bernardino, and her next step is her master's in sociology. We're so proud of you. She's going to start reading my mind. i got to be careful now. The next one we have Clarissa Candelaria. Look at her. Work it, girl. Work it. There you go. We have a mom and daughter team. They worked so hard. There was sleepless nights and times where we would say, hey, let's go do this. And they're like, nope, we can't. We got homework. So this is a really big accomplishment. We're so proud of you guys. Clarissa's next step, she graduated from Chafee College, and she's going to the Cal State University of San Bernardino. Man. Woo. Even though sometimes I know I, it's the night before. I got to finish it the night before. Right? All, them, all of them are like that. The other one, Danae Yudice. Come on, Danae. Come on, girl. Work it. Danae graduated from Centennial High School, and her next step is Cal State University in San Bernardino. Man, we're going to have to start a little uh, campus uh, ministry in San Bernardino, huh? Speech. <laughs> now, let's get to uh, Joshua Alvarez. Look, look at him. Oh, yeah, he's, working. he's got some swag. He's got some swag. Look at him. We got Joshua, graduated from Harupa Valley High School, and his next step is the United States Army. Man, Joshua, thank you. Then we have Leticia Galindo. Look at her. Let graduated from Liberty University out in Georgia, and her next career is Virginia, and her next step is psychology. And just, just so you notice, what, is, Lethe, what does this represent right here, these things? Okay, this is for the school for being a contributor for future 
um, students coming in. And then this is for the Honor Society. What's the Honor Society? Well, that's what these are for, is for summa cum laude. I graduated at 4.0. Wow. That is amazing. Great job. I can't even say that word. That shows you my education level. And then we got Miley Wilkie. Look at her. Oh, yeah. Come on, Miley. Hey, you guys, come over here. You got to come over here. You guys, we're going to run out of room over there. Nice job, Miley. Good job. Miley graduated from Cal State Baptist with her master's, and she's going on to grad school. You want to say anything? <laughs> A master's? Wow, that is awesome. That's where we're heading to, right, guys? Just, yeah. Any, any, any piece of advice for these who are going into that step? Uh, sacrifice your social life. You won't have one. Say goodbye to your loved ones, and you'll see them on the other side. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Then we have Noah Tapia. Look at him. Yeah. He got so much swag, he'd even zip up his gown. Look at him. Yeah, that's right. That's how we roll right here. That's how we do it. Oh, over this side, over this side, over this side. So Noah graduated from Edwanda High School, and he is also planning to join the United States Army. And then the last one, uh, he, he wasn't able to be here this morning, but Vincent Salas, he graduated from... Vincent Salas graduated from Upland High School, and his next step is to attend Chapey College. So, congratulations. Amen. And those are all our graduates right there, amen. Can we just give them a round of applause, amen? They've worked so hard to get where, to where they are, amen. It was, it's a lot, like you said, a lot of sacrifice, and we just want to bless, and we want to pray for them this morning. Amen. One more time. Come on. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, first for your love and mercy in every single one of these people, God. We just thank you, Lord, God, that their trust is in you, Lord. God, I just pray that you would just continue, Lord, just to direct every step that they have, God. I pray that they would just continue to trust you, Lord, through this whole process, Father. Lord, I pray that above everything else, Lord, that they would honor you and bring glory to your name, Jesus, that they would be representatives of your kingdom, God. And I pray, Father, that you would begin to bring people, God, even in their classes and, and, and through their field, God, that need to know you, God, that need to know the gospel, that need to hear the gospel, Lord, so that their lives can be transformed, God. Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord, and all praise and all honor will go to you, God. Continue to be with them. Guide them, help them, give them all the strength that they need, Lord. We pray for coffee shops to be open, Lord Jesus, so that they can continue their work, God. We thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, guys. You guys are awesome, man. I, can't. I love a church that has some smart people in it. Amen? Amen. That's what God put us on here. God, come on. God didn't make no dumb Christians. Come on. Um, come on. And I'm, I'm just stoked. Um, the only one that threw me for a loop was Miley because I could have sworn last year or something. I, didn't I call you up? So you did, you did your, whole ma your whole master's things in one, in one year, year and a half? Girl. Girl's crazy. Look at that. Praise God. So, um, so we're going to continue. I want to, I want we want to have one more, one more quick announcement. I want to have someone say hi to you guys. Uh, our friend, Abigail Malcolm, which she saw her sister, Kezia, is with us all the way from Hong Kong. Abby, come over here. Come over here. Say hi to everybody. So, you, you finished college too, right? Last year? The year before? I just finished my uh, teacher. Oh, okay. 
I finished my uh, student teach uh, my teacher's college. I guess that's what you call it here. So I just finished that this year during my first year of adulting, being a yeah. teacher. <laughs> yeah. So, why are you here? So I am here because you have a conference this uh, end of the month. That's yeah. why I came entirely because of that. And to see um, my, my friends here and uh, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we're, we're leaving room for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and just in case my parents are watching. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to say hi from Hong Kong. Even though we're like 15 hours ahead in time, we, I like came from the future. But re in reality, we're living like in 2020 because we're still with masks. We're still like literally... In May, we went back to physical church. So you guys are living in the future, even though you're like 15 hours behind us. But it's so great to be here. My parents, John and Valerie, say hi. I know you, I am not them, but I hope that this is still good enough. Um, but I just want to encourage you and just say you guys are doing awesome. And I was just reading Daniel today, and I was just reminded about how when they were in the lion's den, when they came out, there was no blemish, no uh, not, not, nothing, no, no smell, nothing. They came out better than they went in. And I think just thinking about like coming from Hong Kong, we've gone through some crazy political stuff when some of y'all were there. And then we had COVID and then just all sorts of craziness. It's like going through one battle after the other. And it's like, when is it going to end? But, you know, once we come out, we know that when we come out, we're going to come out stronger. We're going to come out better. We're not going to have scars. We're not going to have any bruises, any burns, because we are covered and protected by an amazing God. And so I just wanted to encourage you guys in all that you're doing, whether it's school, whether it's life, whether it's in a relationship and finances and family and decisions you have to make, it is going to get better because God is going to get all the glory at the end. So don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you guys know this, but that, that girl's a preacher, so just to let you guys know. But she's going to be with us uh, till I think, the end of, Joel, or end of next month. So you'll see her here on Sundays. Um, if you want to get to know somebody from Hong Kong, you have a lot of questions to ask, like, what's, what's going on over there? She's the perfect person to ask. And don't be afraid to take her out to lunch. She likes tea. So, um, so yeah, so uh, in order, I don't know if you guys know, so we had, we, today we had, we're celebrating our graduates. We have a lot of go, cool things going on. But does anybody know what today is? Sunday, that's a good, that's, a, that's the number one answer. Spe specifically in the church world, you know what, what today is? Pentecost. You anybody know what Pentecost is? Drew, the scholar? It's a feast, yes, yeah, yeah. So the word Pentecost comes from the Greek word Pentecostos, and it's literally a translation of the 50 or the 50th day. So 50 days ago, Easter happened. And, uh, and the reason why I, I want to talk, not just because of Pentecost Sunday, but sometimes we get used to things in church. Like, it doesn't mean anything anymore, right? Like, like some people say, like, oh, you know, once you're 30, your birthdays really don't matter anymore. It's like, it's whatever. Or, or like, you know, you make one accomplishment, you have really hard, hardly nothing to look forward to. And sometimes as Christians, we treat church like that. Just another Sunday. You know, like, like if I was to be like, man, what has Jesus done in your life since, since Easter? Some of you guys, you guys are like trying to figure out what did God do in your life since Easter, and that's only 50 days ago. Like, if God is not moving in your life continually every day, things like Easter and things like today, like where the Holy Spirit fell on the church, those things don't even have an impact in your life. And so, like, what we're, what we're trying to figure out is that it's a, it's, it's, it's a significant day today in the, in the church world because, it, like Drew said, it, it, it's a feast. But originally in the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of First Fruits. So when all, all the agriculture in Israel, all the Israel, Israelites, when they would, do, when they would uh, you know, plant and when they would get, get their, their first flourishing and they would get all the food, they would thank God for their first fruits. It's like the tithing, right? Like you give your first fruits. Well, this is them receiving what God's given them. And not only that, but they, had, they would celebrate this because it was the sign of the early harvest and it enabled Israel. So they... They, they were so glad to get this, this, this harvest, these things that they planted, because they had enough food that was going to last them for the whole year. Like, we are so grateful that God has done something in your life 
and a harvest in your life that's not going to sustain you for a year, but it's going to sustain you for the rest of your life into eternity. And so that's what Israel was doing. And then later on, it became early in the Old Testament. Then it, then it became a traditional Jewish celebration of when God gave Moses the law. So it went from receiving the blessing that was going to sustain them a year to receiving a, a law that they were going to live by to be separated from the world. And in some, in some places, if you, you know, if you go to Israel, if you go to a lot of places in Europe, uh, Eastern Orthodox, you know, some of the Anglican churches, some of the Roman Catholic churches, etc., still celebrate, uh, um, you know, that, that, that far, the harvest festival. But Pentecost comes, like I said, 50 days after the, after the Passover. In the New Testament, it means something to us. Because today is the birthday of the church. Today is the church's birthday. Today is the church's birthday. Man. I would hate to go to your birthday party when you're going to be like, happy birthday. Bitter old people, man. I don't know what's wrong with you guys, man. Today is the church's birthday. Today is the day that Jesus enabled the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be activated amongst his people so that we can have power. That's something to be excited about this morning, amen? And before the ascension, before Jesus went up, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit will come, right? And Acts 1 uh, tells us in two verses, tells us that Jesus commanded the disciples to not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that crazy that sometimes God is speaking to, the, to his people, and he's specifically saying, do not leave Jerusalem. How many of us are so quick when God tells us to stay, we still keep going? And we forfeit and we miss up all these things that God has for us because we're, we're on a mission. Not his mission. We're on some mission, but it might not be his mission. And then we get into all kinds of stuff. So God, Jesus here, is literally telling them to stop, chill out, and wait. Waiting's not always a bad thing. I know we hear, we're used to Amazon. We get things when we want them. You know, you can go drive through. You got DoorDash. We got all these things when we want them in our pocket. But, but in Bible, waiting is, is not even a test. It, it produces character. If you can wait on something, let me tell you, ladies, if you can wait on a good man, fellas, if you can wait yourself stuff, stuff hoeing around, wait yourself on a, girl, on a, on a good girl, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. If you can just wait to not respond to your spouse when you're mad. Children, if you can wait and listen to when your parents actually speak some wisdom to you, and not just they're not just chewing things, you know, trying to lecture you, they're actually trying to give you some wisdom. If you can just wait before you respond with, oh, I know, before you roll your eyes. Let me tell you, it's a lot of good things in waiting. It's a lot of good things in waiting, and this is, this is a good wait. And so the church could not even exist without the Holy Spirit. We don't even exist because of the Holy Spirit. It's not because you chose to get saved. It's not because someone invited you to church. It's not because we have comfortable green chairs, because we have a, a, a place that we can turn a, a school into a church. It's none of that. It's because God enabled it through the Holy Spirit. So on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was giving, given to the church. So the, and so the reason why, so that the church can begin to fulfill its promise. God made something special today, over 2,000 years ago. And in Acts 2, it tells us, I'm going to read a lot here. So it says, Acts 2, starting at verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, which is today, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there, suddenly there came a, a, from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Let me tell you something. If you think you're having church, if you're experiencing all these things, you think worship can move us, you think the, the, the sermons can move us, you think the, 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 uh, the, the community can move us, we haven't even came close to what happened here. It says that they, literally, look at how it starts off. When the day of Pentecost came, so when Sunday came, they were all together in one place. It doesn't mean physically in one place. They were in one mind. And they were in one accord. And it just so happened to be one body. 
Can you imagine the power that the Holy Spirit can do through us when we're enabled, when we're all in the same, have the same vision? When we're all here, not because our family's dragging us to come to church, but you want to be here? You, when, you want to, when you're expecting God to move in your life, can you imagine what the Holy Spirit can do? Can you imagine what you can do if you were actually enabled yourself and actually, and actually committed yourself to entering in worship? Not just keeping your hands down and doing what you do every other Sunday, but actually say, God, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter. I'm going to press in. Can you imagine what the Holy Spirit can do to you, through you? So something happened. They had Jesus for three years, 24-7 for that time. And they were living their life continually over. He gets crucified. Something happens. They, whatever. They go their own ways. Then God brings them back. God brings them back. And look what happens. He says, wait. And boom, homeboy's gone. Jesus is gone, right? And then verse 2 again, it goes, and suddenly there came from, from heaven a sound like a rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided, tongue, and, di and divided tongues as fire appeared to them uh, uh, and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. It says that, they were, that, that there was a sound. There was a sound that happened and it sounded like a rushing wind. And then it said suddenly fire started coming out. Like physical appearance of fire started coming out. And it was falling on each and every person. And they were starting to speak different languages. Can you imagine if I just start speaking some random Bangladeshian dialect? Can you imagine if, 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 if Junior started speaking like some, like, I don't know, like Mandarin, but yet we all understand it? Can you imagine if someone's speaking uh, Cyrillic or, you, or some, other, some kind of other, other gypsy dialect, and we were all like, hey, man, praise God. They did, some, God did something that they were speaking, right? They, they were, God was giving them, like, different languages, and in verse 5 says, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, Devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sis sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. So there was multiple people from around the world. They had their own languages. And in this room, they started hearing people speaking in their language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? So they're pretty much, why in the heck someone from Fontana is speaking my language? Why is someone from Rancho speaking my language? Why is someone from Ontario speaking my language? Aren't these guys from, the, from Galilee, right? And verse 8 says, And how is it that they, we hear each of us in his own native language? Parth, uh, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadoc Cappadoc Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia. Have you guys ever heard of those places? Boom, exactly. And they're listening to their own language. Egypt and parts of Libya, the, uh, belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? What does that mean? Today, I beg to, I beg to ask this question. What does this mean to you? What does church mean to you? Isn't that crazy that God was deliberately giving them the ability to speak other languages and all they would do is praise God and, 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 it was, and they were praising God in whatever language was being spoken and so that the world can understand that God is good. And here, everybody speaks English and yet we can't even tell somebody about Jesus in our own language. But yet, God was doing something. Why? Because the day of Pentecost was the birthday of the church. And the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit at that first Pentecost marks the beginning of such things. The church. The Spirit's work was not finished on the day Jesus died. Can I get an amen? It didn't end on the cross. And as sure as heck, didn't end when he arose. So if the church is continually going, then why does the church end when we leave this building? Right? That's, that's, what, I'm, that's, what, that's what God's trying to say. And the Spirit of God who created the church, he creates it for every generation. God is continually creating his people for the next generation. And that's what we're about. This is why we're here. This is why we're Praise Chapel. We're not Praise Chapel just to have a community, just to have a connect group, just so we can make each other feel good. We're more than that. And so, for example, it is the spirit that makes our meal of bread and our, the food that we eat special. How many of you guys, have, how many of you guys are craving some in and out right now? Maybe, in the bit. Yeah? 
some waffles, some waffles, some Roscoe's chicken and waffles, something, some chilaquiles, right? Some, some enchiladas, like, keep going. So can you imagine when you go eat somewhere, have, you got, have any of you guys ever had dinner or lunch or breakfast with somebody who doesn't, who doesn't love the Lord or doesn't know, not a Christian? Do you see them praying for their food? No. Do you pray for your food? So a chilaquile to your friend that's not a Christian doesn't mean it's just chilaquiles. But to you, you're devoting yourself to something. So our meals, have, it's just a meal, but what makes a difference is what makes us different is that when we bless the food in the name of Jesus, it's our character, what God's enabling us to do. So we can. There's nothing different than blessing the food in the restaurant and telling somebody about the Lord or blessing them. It's no, nothing different. And so the Spirit of God enables us, and it, rem and it reminds us well, the, 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 the sacrifice that Jesus did for our life. That's what the meal, that's when we pray for the, mood, the food, that's what it is. Remembering what Jesus did and what it was. And then we, then we celebrate. And then we celebrate the living Christ today. So when you bless a meal, it, it changes things. But when you come to church, you don't come to church to gain knowledge. You hear what I'm saying? You don't come to church to gain knowledge. You come to church to celebrate the living power and spirit of God. This is why we come to church. We celebrate the power of God. You want to gain knowledge? Pick up and read your own Bible. You want some knowledge? Go to Bible school. You want to come here on a Sunday? You come with an open heart and celebrate God and say, God, speak to me so then I can then take it to the world. This is why Sundays happen. This is not a place where you get fed, people. I want to erase that stigma. This is not where you get fed. This is where you get encouraged. You want to get fed? Read the Bible for yourself. This is not where we come get fed. And, this, and I want to erase this stigma. This is not what we're here for. God didn't, did, God didn't create all this so that you can just read the Word of God and, 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 and stay in your seat. No. Church is where it's a place of action. It's a launching pad. Right? It's highway to the danger zone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get top gun up here. Like, like this, is where we, this is where we get launched to go do things. And just as the first day of Pentecost, when, for, when foreigners were in, in a, had a common language, could understand each other, it's the same thing here. The common folk can understand what we're saying. But how are we going to translate that? How are we going to tell them about the living God? And as the Spirit of God gathers the church, as God, the Spirit of God gathers the church, the conditions are that we go to the people. You guys know that there's conditions when you come here? As the Spirit of the Lord draws people in, the condition is that we are supposed to go out. Right? And so, and, and so we see this. So it was the same, and, and, and they understood that. And the early church recognized the power of the, of the Spirit of God. They understood that the same power, the same power, the same utterance, that spoke existence to be created. The same spirit that the Bible says hovered over water in the, in, in the beginning in the Genesis. That same spirit that speaks through the prophets in the Old Testament is the same spirit that's speaking today to you. Now I'm not saying I'm a prophet. I'm not saying any of that. But what I'm saying is that same Holy Spirit can speak to you individually if you would just ask yourself. Ask yourself, God, are you speaking to me? Like, a, like, ask yourself that and see what God says and wait and wait. Because I can guarantee you that God still speaks. Not only to you, but God still speaks to a variety of people today. And the message by the Apostle Peter was, is still relevant today as it ever was. And I won't get into that. But I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to have the worship team come on up. And, and so the Bible tells us later on in that same chapter that once the Holy Spirit came into that room, and once he started speaking all different languages, Peter, the Bible says that Peter went out into the street. So can you imagine? Have you guys been to the callejones, the alleyways in downtown LA? So imagine, Peter went out. People coming. Like Abigail, she's from Hong Kong, so she knows what, what like real cities look like. Like, people are coming in and out. Streets are packed with people walking, and Peter decides to preach. So, the first step is waiting on God. The second step is being filled by the Holy Spirit. The third step is sharing the gospel. That's it. 
There's no two and a half step. There's no one and a half step. It's wait on the Lord, be filled, share the gospel. So Peter hits the streets and he starts preaching, preaching. And I'm not talking real preaching. And that, and that thing is still relevant. This is what Peter preaches. Peter preaches one, this thing, that we must repent of our sins and of our past life. And then two, that we must confess our sins to God. And then three, that we must believe in our heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. And then the fourth step is that we will receive a gift of the Holy Spirit and be saved. This is what, P what Peter preached. And that promise is today. That promise hasn't changed. That was the same thing I read in the Bible. That was the same thing I was told when I got saved. That if I confess about my sins and believe in my heart and say that Jesus is Lord, that I will be saved. Is that what you heard when you became a Christian? Is that what you heard when they told you? Yeah. So that same message, 2,000 years later, is still the same message. And it has not changed. So I, I want to ask you guys, what has changed in your life? What has changed? Did the Holy Spirit change? Did God's power decrease in your life? Or did, did, are we just complacent this morning? And if some of us are complacent this morning, I want to tell you something. I want to encourage you that, that one way, doesn't matter, everybody in this room, one way or another we're going to pay. There's going to be a penalty for our sins one way or another. The difference is, is that will you pay your sin or that Jesus paid your sin already? Right? And, and we can either be paying for them eternally, individually, or the Lamb of God already did it. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, God made him who had no sin to be sin, or literally a sin offering for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Everybody in this room that has Jesus in your heart and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you that you are the righteousness of God. I'm not being blasphemous. I'm not being a liar. I'm not exaggerating. I am completely telling the truth to your face because that's in God's word right there. And if I'm lying, that means God is lying, and I don't think God's lying. Right? And then it, then it says, it goes and goes, it goes, on the day of Pentecost, this was what happens on, on verse 41, second chapter of Acts. It says, those who accepted his message were baptized. Look at that. Those, this is after Peter preaches. Those who accepted Peter's, Peter, Peter's message as he preached were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So Peter preached one message in the middle of the streets, and 3,000 people got saved instantly. Now, that seems like a big feat. It seems like, well, Javi, you want me to go to Victoria Gardens and preach? Yeah, if you want to, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But what I'm saying is, it wasn't the, it wasn't the amount of people that got saved. It's the fact that Peter trusted the Lord, and Peter was full with the Holy Spirit, and he allowed the Holy Spirit to use him, that when he stepped into the anointing, which God has given him, because God says that we're the righteousness of God, when we stepped into the anointing, that it doesn't matter how the, the, the it doesn't matter the, the quantity, it's the quality. What kind of quality good are you this morning? What kind of quality are you selling? Are we selling some lemons? Are we selling some old secondhand rustic things? Or are we giving people the full amount of Jesus that we've received? The same measure that we receive, are we giving that? Right? And then in Acts 247, this is Acts 241. Now couple of verses later, it says the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You want to talk about revival? Revival is not a three-day church event. Revival is not some, something we tag on a, on a church service. That's not revival. Revival is consistently people are being added to the Lord on a daily basis. That's what I pray. This is what I pray for our church. I pray for the church that we take what God gave us today, this morning, 2,000 years ago that we take it seriously. And I'm not saying that God's going to call all you guys to be Billy Graham or these radical radical Christians or whatever, these people that are just preaching on the, on the airplane. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is, are we just willing to wait and listen and obey God? And in that process, are we asking the Lord, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. 
And in that process, when God's doing, God fills with the Holy Spirit, are we willing to share the gospel? Because we believe that we win people. Praise Chapel wins people. Praise Chapel builds people. And Praise Chapel sends people. We do a good job of building people. We're lacking winning people. And we for sure as heck ain't sending people. So what has changed? The model or us, the church? We're the ones that have changed. We haven't, we haven't held to those truths, those biblical truths that God asks us to do. And so when I read this, when I, when I read this, when it all amongst us, when we're here, on this day, I want to celebrate the birthday of the church of, uh, uh, on Pentecost today. I want to celebrate this, but I want to celebrate it different. Because I want to say, God, both in and outside this church, I'm going to give you my life. You hear that? Both in and outside this church, I'm going to give God my life. And I want you guys to make this promise with me. You're going to give your life to the Lord in and outside this church. And within doing that, I want you to ask God, God, create something new in my spirit. Create something new in my spirit. And then whatever has been old that you planted there, the things that you spoke into my heart a long time ago, God, that I put in the basement or that I didn't take care of and, and, and the roots outgrew it and the things have shackled me back or I, I just left it in the closet and let it be and, and I, I just for, I forgot, I just forgot about those things. God, whatever is old, God, I want you to renew it. Amen? And not only that, the Holy Spirit, man, the Holy Spirit is telling a lot of you in this place that whatever is outworn in your life, God's going to restore it. It's like jacked up leather, fine quality. The leather gets bad if you don't take care of it. A lot of us have old, jacked up leather hearts. And because our hearts are jacked up leather, our attitudes change. The way we look at things change because we've, we've lost the, the focus of our first love. And so the Lord is going to jack, take that outworn leather to heart, and he's going to renew it. He's going to restore it. And he's going to give you a better leather than you originally came in. This is the kind of God we serve. Amen? So I'm going to do an altar call. And if you don't know the Lord this morning, I want to tell you that God loves you. And on this day, just as I, just as I shared the same message that if, if, if without Jesus, we're going to go to hell. Literally. And God already paid the price a long time ago. And just when I was busted up, when I was suicidal, when I was full of hate, full of anger in my heart, God met me at my lowest place. Amen. And he changed my life. He took this worn leather heart that I had, this heart that became stone, and he gave me a life, a heart full of life. And he bled that for me. He bled for me. He bled for you. So if you don't know Jesus, the Bible says that tomorrow is not guaranteed. And everybody I know that's dying, who's been privileged to have a tombstone, has two things that are on that tombstone. A birthday and a dead, dead day. And God doesn't look at that anything. But what God looks about, and what God cares about, and I said this at Nitty Gritty every weekend, God looks at your tombstone, what matters to God is, what did you do with that dash in the middle? From when you were born to when you died, there's a dash in the middle. What was your dash worth? Are you found faithful this morning? Is the Spirit of God moving in your life this morning? Does it not hurt your heart when you disobey the Lord? We're going we're gonna to enter into a new chapter, a new season in our church. And I'm going to declare it. And today is going to be the day. I don't care what other churches are doing. I don't care what other people are teaching. I don't care if people have greater programs than we do. That's fine. Let me tell you about that. Whatever the best church is doing it, Disneyland does it better. So it's not special. What's special is, what are you doing? What are you going to do this morning? 
Are we going to sit in our chairs and live our life, continue like we have been? Or is God on Pentecost going to light a fire over you? And that fire is going to permeate. But that fire will not burn you. But that fire will restore you. And the fire is going to convict you and move you and to step into the calling that the God has for you. So if you are, is your heart beating? Remember we talked about encounters when, when Jesus talked to these two men and Jesus took off one stranger tell the other guy, did your heart not burn? When, the, when he spoke those words into our heart, that when Jesus speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks things into your heart, does your heart not burn? Do you not have this anticipation that God use me? Use me. I don't care about what my neighbor is doing. I don't care about what my wife is doing, what my, what my husband's doing, where my kids are not serving the Lord or they are serving. It's not about that. It's about me. What am I doing? You want to change the situations around your life? Serve the Lord. Come on. I'm being serious. You want to change your outcome? You want to change your environment? Serve the Lord. Get on your knees. Repent. Ask God to use you. Ask the Lord to be used by God. And if that's you this morning, come on. If that's you this morning, if you're tired, frustrated with things, I'm telling you right now, this is the place to change it. The altar. So I want everybody to stand up. I want everybody to stand up. And if you need a touch of the, if you personally need a touch of the Lord in your life this morning, it's not about Pastor Javi or, or Pastor Lou praying for you. It's not about none of that. It's are you going to accept and receive the call of God in your life? And wherever you're at, literally, in your, wherever you're at physically in this place, I want to tell you, Open your heart. Press into the Holy Spirit. Ask God. God, move in my life right now. Come on, church. Come on. God, move in our life. Yahweh, move in my life. Lord, change the atmosphere right now, God. Lord, change the atmosphere, God. God, let the anointing go past the song that we sing. God, let the anointing go past the words that the, that the, that the pastor is saying, God. But God, let your voice be quick. Lord, let our ears render to your, to your voice, God. Let us hear your call, God. Come on, church, we're going to press in this morning. Yeah, we, can, we, we got cupcakes after this. We got, we're going to celebrate the graduates. But right now, this is you. You and God right now. Come on. And if you're challenged... If you're challenged, I want to tell you that the alt altar is open right now. And if God is telling you, step into my presence, meet me at the altar, build a monument like Abraham built a monument, come to the altar and meet me here. Church, feel free to come up. Feel free to come up. This is not about laying hands. This is about being responsive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. We are going to step into destiny. We are going to walk into what God's telling us to walk into. And we are going to do it delightfully. We're not going to, we're going to stop caring about what others think. What others think. And we're going to, it's going to be about us laying down our lives. Laying down our lives, Lord. God, if you want to sacrifice, God, you already did the altar sacrifice. Lord, I'm just here to obey. I'm here to obey, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, Jesus.